Mr. Hans Kluge, thank you for joining My us. Pleasure. Uh, there uh, are major disparities between uh, cities and villages, also between regions uh, in terms of healthcare access of professionals. Uh, how could be uh, the personnel attracted to less developed areas where they have uh, fewer uh, personal and professional opportunities? It's a huge challenge in all the countries of the region and there is not one magic bullet. So we need to have complex approach including education for example, internships now or mainly in the hospitals, when I was a medical doctor, but I didn't have an internship, for example, in the rural area, so that people can get acquaintance, number one. Number two, also important regulation, for example, giving grants, scholarships to young students, but then in return, they would have to work, for example, two years in a rural area. It happened in some countries. Then, of course, support. Financial incentive, very important, but also non-financial incentives are important, for example, give an apartment to the medical doctor or the nurse or take care of the family because it's not only the health workers, also my family, which is very important and then finally is to support them with career development and recognition. We had a great story of a junior doctor in the National Health Service in the UK here where the doctor was working day and night and ultimately no appreciation and she told then is when you are getting the burnout. Informal payments um, are still present in the health system in Romania, even uh, if the level has reduced uh, after uh, the wage increases. How, uh, what is, are the chances that uh, this phenomenon will disappear uh, while we have such a staff shortage? Out-of-pocket payment is a huge issue in many, many countries in our region, particularly for people who have a chronic disease, a long-term disease, and they cannot pay for their medicines. But as you are mentioning, I would like to comment, Romania, they have been decreasing already, but of course it's a process, really. So first and foremost, what needs to be done is that the doctors, the nurses get a decent salary. That's very important, good working conditions. And then the medicines need to be affordable. For example, if you belong to the poor segment of the population, then you should be helped by the National Health Insurance Fund to have that particular medicine. Because the principle is no one should become poor due to ill health. The pandemic crisis has put a lot of pressure on the health system. Uh, many people complain that they uh, have problems after uh, COVID uh, infection. Uh, what uh, does the latest uh, long COVID uh, data show? I am so grateful that you talk about long COVID. We don't talk enough about it, bravo, because we know from our studies that in our region, 50 countries, about 17 million people developed long COVID in the first two years. And the beginning, we didn't know what it was. People were not taking seriously. So we need to develop for those people psychosocial support, because strong people who all of a sudden cannot get out of their seat or their bed in the morning to do a normal walk, this really impacts your mental health. They need to get unemployment benefits, sick leave, and much more research. The key issue is to work with the patients, like we are doing with, for example, Long COVID Europe, to tackle the Long COVID. When I had COVID after two years, although I was very strict, but ultimately the Omicron, I got it. For the first time in my life, I was so-called lazy. Because doctors told me, force yourself, Dr. Kluge, to take 10 days rest even after the symptoms to avoid the long COVID. So people, please take your vaccines, your booster. If you have COVID, take it very seriously. Take the rest because this long COVID can be very, very debilitating. And we need more research, more appreciation and taking the vaccines. There was a huge debate about the origin of the virus. Did it escape from the laboratory? Well, first I want to tell that WHO continues to investigate. There was a lot of media attention that WHO stopped its efforts. Absolutely not. Actually, only last week we got additional what we call genomic data, metagenomics, meaning the dissection of the virus from the Wuhan seafood wholesale market, which was uploaded to our database. We are investigating. And we keep 
calling on all countries, including China, to transparently share the data. But we know from previous viruses this can take a long time. And the last question, is this pandemic over? The pandemic is not over. Last week alone, 1,500 people died in our region. We shouldn't have died. But of course, the situation is much better. I am confident that this will be the year that we can call the pandemic over. But people should learn the lessons on the vaccination. If you have a certain disease and you have someone coughing, not necessarily COVID-19, but maybe a flu, put on the mask if it's in a very crowded area that you cannot escape. Keep a healthy lifestyle and for the country very important is what we call surveillance. So if a certain virus pumps up, that very quickly this is being detected and this can be easily done in the wastewater. Thank you for this interview. My great pleasure. Thank you and be healthy.